there. Good afternoon. This is Manama, the capital of Bahrain. I am staying in the Tulip Inn Hotel right there. Great room at a very fair price. So, Bahrain is an island nation in the Persian Gulf, but here they call it the Arabian Gulf. If you look at Google Maps, while you are here in many of the uh, Arabic countries along the Gulf here, then on Google Maps it will say Arabian Gulf. So I arrived here three days ago. I'm only staying for four nights, so tonight is my last night here. The past couple of days I was busy working away and stuff, so this is my only day to explore Bahrain. I will do my best to show what I can in the uh, next uh, few hours. So. Bahrain is a small country, it is not a tiny country. It is the 23rd smallest country in the world. So in other words, 22 countries are even smaller. It takes about an hour to drive from Manama here to the southernmost uh, point of the island. It is actually larger than Andorra, the uh, little country in the Pyrenees of Europe between uh, France and Spain there. And uh, so there is a fair amount to see here I did some searching online and there's actually quite a bit of uh, pretty cool stuff to see here which unfortunately I won't be seeing in the course of this uh, afternoon of exploring. I'm just going to cruise around the uh, city here and show what I can. I will catch an Uber from here because I guess Uber does work and then I will uh, just kind of catch Ubers around, maybe take a bus or something, I'm not sure, but uh, I think that uh, public transportation is not exactly popular because everybody has their own car pretty much. It is an oil rich or at least it was an oil rich nation. I guess it was one of the first or maybe even the first Gulf country to discover oil and so as a result then it is running out of oil sooner than some of the other countries. But uh, still it is a very developed and modern as you can see city and country here and the uh, vehicles definitely rule. There are not a lot of people walking around on the streets here. So the uh, meal that I showed where I had dinner last night is right over there in that building. Looks like a nice, short, quick and easy walk, right? But no, because there is an expressway right there, a very uh, wide expressway with a fence in the middle of it and no way to get across it other than going to the next overpass which is like a kilometer walk that way and then you have to come back so it's a long walk to get to over there there is a nice uh, market right here that i went to and got some various like breakfast supplies just right here so you can just walk over there a big very uh, comprehensive market hypermarket it is called lulu hypermarket and that is basically all that i have seen of bahrain so far in the uh, past two days just walking around right in this area. So time to uh, catch an Uber and go to see the souk, the market of Bahrain. So let's go and explore more of this uh, interesting country that I know very little about, but I'm looking forward to uh, at least getting a bit of a glimpse of it in the uh, next few hours. Here we go.
That's the soup just there? Yeah, you have to walk in. Excellent. Thank you very much. You. Have a great day. All right, so uh, that worked out. It was 2.30 Bahraini dinar. So two dinar and 30 whatever like the cents is. The uh, exchange rate to the US dollar is about 2.5 dollars to one Bahraini dinar. And so you multiply 2.3 dinar by 2.5 and so you're looking at, you know, five dollars basically for the uh, Uber right there. So, I wanted to uh, mention some rules that you want to keep in mind here in Bahrain. Bahrain is an Arabic country. There is a bridge to Saudi Arabia here. The main language of Bahrain is Arabic, but uh, English is widely spoken. It is taught in the schools. Basically, everybody pretty much seems to uh, speak English. Now, only about 50% of the uh, residents of Bahrain are actually Bahraini. Many are from Asia, from other parts of Asia, especially South Asia. The uh, bellboy at my hotel when I was checked in, I talked with him and he was from uh, Bangladesh. So basically a lot of uh, people come from other parts of Asia to work here. A lot of the uh, basic uh, workers are not uh, Bahraini. You can tell it's very apparent from both the uh, dress and the accents of the uh, people. So like most of the people that you actually interact with in the course of going to restaurants and your hotel and stuff like that are actually not Bahrainis. So Bahrain is a conservative Arabic culture, but it is not as conservative or as strict as some other Arabic or Middle Eastern or Muslim country, so it is a little more relaxed actually, relatively speaking, but there are laws against, for example, homosexuality is totally illegal in Bahrain. Living with or having romantic relationships, shall we say, between unmarried people is not allowed. Hello, salam. salam. Thank you. Uh, salam alaikum is uh, the uh, greeting in Arabic. As you can see the uh, men there dressed in the more traditional local Arabic attire. And so romantic relationships between unmarried people is illegal. You cannot live with somebody of the opposite sex that you are not married with. And then going around the country you want to dress modestly shorts are not allowed i'm not sure if it's actually illegal to wear shorts walking around but basically don't do it don't wear shorts walking around don't wear a tank top so i'm dressed you know basic uh levi's and just a dress shirt but at least i'm not wearing shorts and a tank top something like that and then there's a law that is going to make my job of filming around here complicating and a little bit sketchy which is that it is illegal to film people without their permission. The punishment is imprisonment. I could be imprisoned for what I'm doing right now, filming, including capturing people just in the background without getting their permission. Now, I think that this is uh, very kind of loosely enforced, I'm sure. I think it is more about not uh, like putting people online in compromising situations. It is more of like a social media law as opposed to just, you know, getting somebody in your picture or your video in the slightest will land you in jail. I don't think that's going to be the case, but uh, basically I just want to be careful, respectful, and not, uh, you know, point my camera at people directly without uh, getting their permission. So this is the suit here. I'm just gonna go for it and uh, just be considerate and conscious about uh, the uh, particular filming situation. So, here we go. I believe that this is the entrance into the souk. So here you can see Filipino and Thai cuisine, so that is kind of a hint of one of the influences 
the Asian influence from uh, various parts of Asia that is very prominent here. Almost half of the residents of Bahrain are from Asia. Ooh, wow, some really, really good smells. There we go, incense. So, Manama, that's where we are, the capital city of Bahrain. The population of the country is about 1.5 million. The official name of the country is the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is a kingdom. The king, who I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, has ruled since 2002. And so that brings up another rule. I haven't actually read this one, but I'm sure that it is the case that you do not want to insult the kingdom or the royalty or the government. And so the king of Bahrain has ruled since 2002 and his family, the dynasty, has ruled since 1783. So that gives you a little clue of the history that has been a independent nation for centuries. And look what we got here, Little India. Welcome to Little India. Our vision is to beautify and showcase one of the richest kingdom of Bahrain's historical areas, either Little India and Bahrain. There are many Indian restaurants in the area. It gives an account of the arrival of the first Indians into the kingdom of Bahrain. It is still unknown when the first bonds between India and Bahrain were established. Chronological mapping has been difficult, but archaeological evidence shows a relationship going well back into the second millennium BC. Little India. So I guess that's back in here. Let's go uh, take a look. I don't wear a watch, so. What is it called? This is the fabric. Oh, this is the uh, traditional. Uh, yeah. What's the name of it? It's the agal. Agal. Agal katra. Agal. 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 This one. I see. How much is this? It's only the eight bit. Eight bit. Both. I see. I see. One minute. No, thank you. I'm. I'm actually One leaving minute. tomorrow, no so problem. I'm not going you, to. You, you're not buying no problem. Excuse me. What, what things for the dust? That's white dress also have. Oh, I see. You mean uh, the... Yeah, yeah. What, what, is, what is the name of the... Dope. Dope? Dope. Yeah. Dope. Uh. Oh, I see. Okay. This is the, the five bed you got. Yeah. No, I'm not looking to buy, so... Thank you. Can I join some bread? What would it? What would it? Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. Is it uh, Arabic or...? Arabic. I see. Raba for man. I see. Nice, nice. Not really doing much shopping today. So. If I was going to stick around for a few more days, I might have gone for it, but uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. So he was asking four, which is like uh, ten bucks. So you know, not a bad deal. That was Al Yarmouk watches. Okay, this is starting to feel more souk-like. Okay. 
So I'm going to assume that that is the uh, king. It's the same image you saw on the building while we were driving in here. Hello, salam. United States. And you? I'm from India. Where in India? Yeah. You're from Kerala. Okay. I've been to India ten, ten times, but not to Kerala, so <laughs> maybe another time. Have a nice day. Do you have any any shirts with collar like uh, like this kind? T-shirt with a collar uh, for hot weather. Short hand. Yeah. Short sleeve. Short sleeve. You want? You have? Uh, uh, half sleeve, no sorry. Nothing like this. Okay. No, I want to say half full sleeve is coming. In. I see. Yeah. Okay. You like any uh, souvenir Bahrain? This is a Bahrain T-shirt. Oh, I have quite a few T-shirts right now. This, so. But uh, this is a souvenir Bahrain. Yeah. You like? Um, no, any thanks. cap Bahrain? It's a nice one. Have different colors more. You can pour this in winter Bahrain, this is Bahrain Covenant. Okay. This is for when it's snowing, when it's snowing in Bahrain, then you, yeah. you have the warm it's hat. Color, yeah. <laughs> like this, 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 this okay. color, yeah. yeah. No, I think it's I'm good enough. Cap, no. I think yeah, I'm and the uh, Bahrain traditional. Ah, yes. It's also very, very fast coming. Yeah. You like yeah. this? I give you the special deal. It's, I'm okay. It's very different. I give you a show box. So no, thank you, sir. Oh, right. Good luck. I might be in the business to buy some shirts, but where I'm going next, it is going to be very hot. I want uh, basically some shirts like this, maybe even a little bit thinner. Something that is very, very thin, like open with the collar. I don't need more t-shirts. They are too hot and sticky in the uh, very hot weather. Okay, well, uh, I think that is going to do it for the souk more to see but uh, there's also much more of the city to see. I now need to get to the uh, fort which is a completely different area of the city so I'll catch another Uber. Let's uh, wander around a little bit here. Bab al Bahrain, that is the souk. Welcome to the historic Bab al Bahrain. Manama's iconic port, completed in 1949 by Sir Charles Belgrave, the Bab, meaning door in Arabic, was an important entrance point to the city of Manama, which was an important trade and business capital in Bahrain. The land in front of the Bab was once the sea, and the area was only reachable by dhows, traditional wooden boats. Later on, the land was reclaimed and developed into what you see now. Beyond this archway, the souk, Little India, cafes and restaurants, conserved houses and other historical sites lie waiting for you to explore them. So, uh, I'm not sure how far the sea is away now. It mentioned that the sea was closer and then it's been kind of filled in or whatever. But I want to get a look at the uh, sea. Okay, here I am back where I started. Salam, salam. So, uh, before I catch a, uh, taxi to another part of the city. Let's try to find the sea. I'll look on my phone. Not sure what direction it is at all, but it'd be nice to uh, get a close look at the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Gulf, as you prefer. So I can feel the uh, sea breezes. feels really nice. 
It's basically out that way. Not that it's a sea, it's a gulf, so gulf breezes. I guess that's a mosque there. And so that is the king there. Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa is king of Bahrain since 14th February, happy Valentine's Day, 2002, after ruling as Emir of Bahrain from 6th March 1999. He is the son of Isa bin Salman al Khalifa, the previous and first Emir. The country has been ruled by the al Khalifa dynasty since 1783. So check out this massive expressway. You can see the uh, fence, but it looks like I can get across over here, I think. Anyway, as you can see, not many other people walking. Lots of cars. All right, here we go. So there you can see King Fahad Causeway. King Fahad was the king of Saudi Arabia from 1982 until 2005. And the King Fahad Causeway goes to Saudi Arabia across the uh, bridge that connects Bahrain with uh, Saudi Arabia. And a fun fact about that bridge, it was the only bridge up until a couple of years ago in which women could only drive on one side of the bridge because it connected Bahrain with Saudi Arabia and women only earned the right to drive in Saudi Arabia recently, I forget which year. And so a woman could uh, drive halfway across the bridge until the border, I guess, and then would have to uh, give the car over to a male driver. But luckily, they came to their senses in Saudi Arabia and women can now drive. So there you can see the Arabic and English, Bahrain Bay. So I think that I will see the uh, water very soon here. Bahrain Harbor. And I have never seen a building quite like this one. Look at that. I guess it's like cooling system, the uh, windmills. Trippy. Lots of construction in Bahrain. Those oil dollars are being spent. All right, there we go. Finally seeing some water. Looks like that's actually where I want to be. Little uh, walking bridge over the water. But uh, I wanted to keep going straight up there. I'll go this way and then get down there eventually. Boy, that is just a wild sight of skyscraper after skyscraper sticking up out of the desert. Definitely reminds me of Dubai a lot. Imagine this place 30, 40 years ago, totally, totally different. I'm sure just like kind of start desert with, you know, a city, but uh, nothing like this. Yes, yeah, sea and desert. <laughs> I guess that guy could hear me because he said, no desert, no desert, sea. There we go, Bahrain Bay the Arabian-Persian Gulf.
Bahrain Food Festival 2022. Welcome. Definitely not happening now. Italian burgers, Bahraini tikka, Balti cuisine. What is Balti? Hong Kong, Beefco, pastries on the fly. Authentic Jordanian cuisine, Bahrain local food, plated street food. Milked, burgers and shakes, al coulage. Quite a uh, cultural mix here. Indian street food, lobster, sushi, Senor Pacos. So it was obviously very recent or going to happen soon. We got instruments, drum set. Maybe it happened last weekend or something. It doesn't give the uh, dates. I see. It's finished uh, like a few days ago. Be no, no, no. Now it's so happened. It's it open at uh, four o'clock. Ah, I see. So in the evening. I see. Yeah, I see. yeah. If you want, we have be open. If you want any food. Oh, I'm yes, actually not please. hungry right now, but I was ah. just curious when uh, it's more uh, the music and everything. Ah, it's, it's coming in the four o'clock. Tonight? Started. Yeah. Okay, great. Tonight. How long does the festival go for? One week or? Uh, no, days? it's, uh, it's uh, last hit uh, one, uh, one, did one. First of, uh, First of uh, April, April is finished. April is finished. I see, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because Ramadan is oh, coming. Yeah, yeah, Ramadan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, that's something I forgot to mention that uh, when I booked my uh, flight here, I had not thought about Ramadan. I haven't been in the Middle East in a while. I was here five years ago. And uh, of course, Ramadan happens for about a month over the course of uh, each year. And so I'd mentioned in a previous video that I was going next to the Middle East. And so somebody sent me a message and said, you might not want to go to the Middle East now because Ramadan is about to start. I was like, oh man, because uh, like all restaurants will be closed. There will just be hardly anything happening, hardly anything open at all. And so I checked the uh, dates and luckily it starts on April 2nd. Today is March 30th. I arrived here March 27th. And so I fly out tomorrow and then Ramadan starts two days later. So. It's kind of a lucky thing that uh, I wasn't making plans to do more traveling around the Middle East, which I was thinking about, but uh, everything worked out, luckily. Are you from Manama? I'm from... no, I'm from Indian. Okay, which place? Uh, South Kerala. You're from Kerala, okay. I've been to India many times. Uh -huh, where? Oh, so many places, but not to Kerala yet, but Delhi and Rishikesh oh, and... That's, uh... Mumbai, yeah. Chennai, Hampi. Ah, Chennai is my nearest place. Okay. Uh, South India. Yeah. I've been in uh, Tamil Nadu mm -hmm. a lot and just north of Kerala, what's the state north from Kerala? Kerala, Kerala state, yeah. But the next the next one? Next one, Chennai. But next one, north. Somewhere north? Between uh, Kerala and Goa, there's a big I state. Go. Goa, a small one. But uh, just next to Goa. Yes. Next to Goa, Karnatak. Karnataka, that's yes. right. That's right, yeah. I've been to like... Uh, Mysore Palace, you see that? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Mysore, uh, Gokarna, Sravanabalagola. Do you know this place? Which one? Sravanabalagola. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, the place where the Jain religion, it's like the Mecca, the Mecca of uh -huh. Jains. Uh -huh. They have the big statue of the man. Uh, yeah. Bangalore City. And Bangalore, yes. Yeah. How long have you lived in Bahrain? Bahrain, seven years. Seven years, okay. Yeah, I like Bahrain. Yeah, you like? Yeah. Life is good? Yeah, life is yeah. No tension. <laughs> no what? No tension. Yeah, no more relaxed, more relaxed. More relax. What kind of things do you do uh, like for fun? Like go to the beach or? Here? Yeah. Yeah, beach, more beaches, more uh, nightclub also. 
Nightclubs, okay. Yeah. But there's no drinking, I guess, in the nightclubs, yeah? Some places you can find alcohol. If you're non-Muslim, then I guess... Ah, uh, that's maybe non-Muslim. Yeah. You have a family or...? No, family in India. In India, okay. Here. Family here expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you been to Saudi Arabia? No. Okay. But can you go or...? It's difficult. You have to get visa or...? Uh, I don't know. I'm not I sure. need visa first. Yeah. Because it's so close, only just to drive, but... Uh, yeah, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. You have to... This road, going the third interchange, take a right. So yes. Straight Saudi. Then you will be in Saudi Arabia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go in the only, you know, the Saudi border. Okay. I drop off customer after return. I see, I see. Have you been to Qatar or any other countries? Yeah, Qatar, Qatar making the bridge, but uh, after the problem, that's one stop. Yes, they were making the bridge and then because of political problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Political problems. Okay. So all army country, political problems. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes Saudi and UAE. Sometimes Bahrain to Qatar. Okay. <laughs> There's usually a dispute between somebody, huh? Yeah. It's better? Yeah, better. Uh, I see, okay. Maybe start next year, the uh, bridge working. Okay. Start. The Kalat al Bahrain Site Museum. Kalat al Bahrain also known as the Bahrain Fort or Portuguese Fort, is an archaeological site located in Bahrain. Archaeological excavations carried out since 1954 have unearthed antiquities from an artificial mound of 12 meters, 39 feet height, containing seven stratified layers created by various occupants from 2300 BC up to the 18th century, including Kassites, Greeks, Portuguese and Persians. It was once the capital of the Dilmun civilization and was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005. So man, a lot of history here. So there's a cafe here, Cafe Green Bar. And look at this. Nice views of the water. And sit out here, it is Pleasantly warm because it is end of March. I'm sure the summers are scorching hot here. Some uh, nice uh, palm trees and the fort. That looks really cool. So I guess that this is the museum and where you uh, pay to get your ticket to go in to the fort. So uh, let's do it. Hormuzi Portuguese Fortress. At the end of the 1970s, one of the major discoveries by the French team was bringing to light the ancient access channel to Kalat al Bahrain, which was naturally cut from the coral reef and foreshore and which permitted the site to play its role as a harbor during almost 4,000 years. So, it is two. Dinar 20 to uh, come into the museum. That's about five dollars, but the fort is actually free. So this will be a quick uh, Look at the museum So the early beginnings 2200 BC early Dilmun period and then again Dilmun 2 middle Dilmun late Dilmun Tylos from 300 BC to 400 AD and then Islamic period, 1250 to 1650. The snake bowls. The three sectors where about 50 deposits of snake sacrifices were discovered 
represent one of the most spectacular discoveries of the late Domon phase. The containers, most of pottery and in one case alabaster, were placed at different depths in holes cut into the plastered floors of the rooms. In one of them, the holes had been carefully replastered by similar material. In several cases, other bowls, simple pot sherds, or even a wooden lid protected the sacrificial contents of the container. So I guess these are them, the bowls containing sacrificial snakes. There you can see snake skeleton. Alexander the Great was everywhere around 325 BC. The island of Bahrain is accosted by one of Alexander the Great's maritime expeditions, henceforth known as Tylos. The island undergoes an exceptional phase of prosperity. Wow. of you who saw my video from Turkey almost two years ago in which I bought this coin at the uh, ancient archaeological site of uh, Aspendos in Turkey, a coin that represented a uh, Greek coin, a fake replica of a Greek coin, the Syracuse Deca Drachma from Syracuse, Italy, but a Greek city. If you happen to see that video, anyways, either way, then this is very, very interesting. Here is the real thing. Not a decadrachma, but a tetradrachma. This jar, discovered in 1970 close to the north rampart, contains approximately 310 silver tetradrachmas, imitations of the official coinage of Alexander the Great. Oh, so these are imitations as well. One considers today that these careful imitations were minted during the 2nd century BC, and so Alexander the Great lived in the 4th century BC by a regional workshop. And so here they are. So I guess that is Alexander the Great depicted on the coins. Man, they're gorgeous. Qalat al-Bahrain, ancient harbor and capital of Dilmun. Here is the entire country of Bahrain. Here we are. Qalat al-Bahrain site, Manama, the city here, and so that is the southernmost point that it would be about an hour drive to get down there, and here you can see various other archaeological sites, burial mounds, royal mounds. Capital of Dilmun. So the museum, the city out there, of course. This is the coastal fortress, palm groves, 
North Rampart and Coastal Fortress Moat and the Hormuzi Portuguese Fortress. Pretty awesome fort. It's nice and cool in here. Not that it's all that hot outside, but uh, I'm sure that these stone walls do a pretty good job of keeping the place fairly cool, even on the hottest of days. So I thought that I would mention a few helpful facts about Bahrain, especially in terms of visiting here. So one of the reasons that I decided to come to Bahrain as opposed to Kuwait or Qatar or Saudi Arabia or other uh, countries in the area is that it was very, very easy. I did some research online and found that uh, no visa required for Americans anyways, and I'm sure for lots of other citizens of the world. No e-visa on arrival, nothing. Just uh, show my passport, that is it. Very simple and easy. The customs guy was very friendly. And also no COVID restrictions right now. So that was the other one that was the uh, deal breaker for some of the other uh, places. I was looking at Kuwait and Qatar and they both had restrictions, I forget exactly, but either testing, I think Kuwait is just completely closed in general, and Qatar maybe had testing requirements, something like that. And then Saudi Arabia as well, I was seriously thinking of going to, but I wasn't completely clear on whether it was open as far as COVID restrictions. 
it is now possible to visit Saudi Arabia as an American citizen without getting a visa in advance. You get an e-visa or a visa on arrival. They are making it a lot easier to visit. I guess they're trying to increase tourism. But as far as COVID, then, as best as I could figure out, then there might have been quarantine required or maybe a COVID test. It wasn't quite clear. It can be a little bit tricky to uh, find the certain and updated latest information on that issue because it's changing so fast. But uh, I do really want to go to Saudi Arabia and the other countries in the area. Wow. The Madbasa formed an integral part of traditional and domestic crafts in the Arabian Gulf and was still until recently used to produce date molasses, a traditional sweetener. The earliest Madbasa discovered on the Kalat al Bahrain site dates back to the mid 14th century BC. I guess that's this here. Wow, there's uh, little pieces of glass. Probably hard to see, but this is really interesting. The uh, layout with the little mounds on the floor and then all of these little uh, glass pieces. Check that out. Leftovers from the uh, craft making, I guess. A very beautiful arched building. And as far as uh, alcohol goes, it is not entirely banned in Bahrain. It is banned for Muslims. Muslims are not allowed to drink alcohol. But I guess it can be found in certain hotels. It is definitely not easily available. I haven't had any alcohol since I've been here. A different room. It is a dome. Okay, I'm now on the other side of the fort. The moat down there. Let's see where this goes. Anki's well in Sumerian mythology land and sea were thought to float on top of a freshwater ocean called Apsu. The subterranean ocean was the foundation of the world, home of the gods and the source of seas and rivers. It was watched over by Enki, the Mesopotamian god of freshwater and wisdom. The famed Mesopotamian legend of Enki and Nin Hursag explains the creation of the world and relates that Enki bestowed water upon the land of Dilmun. The meaning of the word Bahrain, literally the two seas in Arabic, refers to the sea water of the Arabian Gulf and the sea of fresh water springing up through artesian wells and which resulted in Dilmun's wealth and luxuriant vegetation. Very interesting, the two seas, the one surrounding it and the one beneath it. And this is yet a slightly different style of building with these, I don't know what you call those, little uh, indentations in the corners. And then I guess this is the well.
All right, let's go get a closer look at that beach. There is the fort. And right next to it is Karbabad Beach. Out there is the region of the city called Karbabad. The taxi driver said that this place here is very busy in the evenings. Pretty typical for uh, this part of the world, for obvious reasons, for uh, things to be very quiet in the middle of the afternoon and then get a lot more lively late afternoon or it's more like uh, into the evening as it cools down, although now it is perfectly nice and cool. It actually gets a little bit chilly once the uh, sun goes down in the evening here. So from here, I'm going to walk in that general direction back towards my hotel when uh, searching for what to see in Manama not a whole lot came up there was a mosque I think I'll skip that seen uh, lots of mosques but uh, there were a lot of things to see outside of Manama elsewhere in Bahrain some really interesting uh, places so there was the Dilmun burial site so this was the capital of the Dilmun civilization and there are some burial mounds fairly close by but like maybe 10 uh, miles or something like that away and then elsewhere on the island there's more beaches there's something called the tree of life this like massive tree that apparently is kind of a mystery why it continues to survive in the dry climate this big uh, tree, like just one tree by itself, something like that. And then the area at the southern tip looked kind of interesting, like a harbor area with uh, one of these kind of fabricated, like in uh, Dubai, the uh, land sticking out in a formation with, uh, I guess, hotels or something on it, and various other things. So there is a fair amount to see here other than just uh, sand and palm trees and skyscrapers. Here, obviously a uh, racetrack for those dune buggies. So I'm sure that they got those suckers fired up in the uh, evening. That would be fun to see. It's too bad that uh, everything is so spread out. So if you don't have a car, it's really not very convenient to just like pop over and do this or that. It's all rather far apart. Not a city for walking, unless you really like to walk a lot. But I do, so that's what I'm gonna do. Walk until I'm tired of it and then maybe uh, get another Uber. We'll see where I end up and what I see along the way. <laughs> 